My name is Jane Tin Kaisen. My name is Gustin Sun Kang. And the piece we are showing in the exhibition is The Woman, the Orphan and the Tiger. It's a 72 minute video work from 2010. The Woman, the Orphan and the Tiger was primarily filmed in the year 2007 to 2009. And then we spent about one year editing the film and it was initially released and shown in 2010. The main speakers of The Woman, the Orphan and the Tiger were women in their 20s and 30s um, uh, belonging to the Korean diaspora. So it counted transnational adoptees, um, second generation Korean Americans and um, also uh, the Sainichi uh, uh, the Korean diaspora experience. It was primarily filmed in Korea, but also the United States, China, Denmark, and Japan as well. And so the film actually tries to create a, a form of genealogy between three generations of women who in different ways have been marginalized um, due to factors of militarism and patriarchy and nationalism. And uh, so in that way, the film uh, talks about um, the former comfort women issue and um, the issue of U.S. military bases in Korea uh, and transnational adoption. It was the first, um, one of the first major collaborative works that Jane and I worked on together um, and was sort of where we established um, a type of working style together. Um, that we've been sort of continuing for many years afterwards. And so as you can see also in the work, um, it's quite experimental in its form. Well, actually the title, The Woman, the Orphan and the Tiger, comes from um, a book called Fugitive Visions, uh, written by Jin Jung Trenke, who's one of the voice narrators in the film. And um, we both felt that it was an incredibly evocative title and one that was um, very appropriate for the subject matter and also in one way or another pointed out towards some of the more base elements within the story. And uh, the woman, the orphan and the tiger begins with uh, the sound of voices, off-screen voices that um, turn into a cacophony in the end of um, overlaid uh, voices of women um, speaking of different forms of um, uh, socio marginalization um, and uh, this this chorus of voices um, is actually what initiates the film and also how it ends so a lot of the film is um, structured around uh, uh, voices and the multiplicity of voices so it's not um, it's not a work told from a singular um, perspective but actually told through um, or, or driven by in a sense um, a, a collective uh, affinity yeah and it's interesting because within that um, there's several different modes of voice that exist in in the work there's Wo there's voices that were strictly coming from interviews that we conducted with many different people, but then there's also voices within the film that are the actual participants reading their own authored work, um, their own poetic work, um, and then there are voices that come from testimony as well. So, as Jane mentioned, it's sort of this combination of all of these different voices coming together that end up creating the work. And so it also merges um, different forms of archival footage um, with um, recordings that we did of, of different situations, of protests. Um, so it's, it really is an interweaving of, of different material. Um, and something that was important for us in um, creating the narrative in this way was um, in a lot of ways the work is about um, issues that have been secreted or silenced um, 
So we wanted to create a film narrative that is not um, told in a linear chronological way, uh, but that is rather told through different fragments um, and that evokes a, a sense of intergenerational memory and trauma. Intergenerational, sort of multi, multi-directional um, outlook, I think. Yeah.